episode 50. One green crystal for 10 years lifespan. So brutal. They must be wild boars. Actually, that makes sense. Pigs found in nature certainly wouldn't be like those domesticated by humans over several generations. Speaking of which, it had been a long time since she'd eaten pork. Looking at the attractive pork belly, Blair felt her mouth water. The various kinds of animal meat were all tougher than beef. She had really never eaten such tender meat like pork. Then let's bring it home and eat it tomorrow, Blair said. Roger poked Blair's forehead speechless. Have you ever seen anyone leave their meat overnight during the hot season? Let's just keep it. I have a way to make sure it doesn't go bad, Blair said. She would just have to waste some salt. Preserving meat was not something that could be done that easily. Roger was still doubtful and only said with a smile, Don't cry if it goes bad tomorrow. I won't. Blair shook her head repeatedly. Because Stephen had been too quiet, she turned her head to look at him and saw Stephen touching his own skin. Is it very hot? Without waiting for Stephen to answer her question, she said to Roger, I've had my fill. I'll go back with Stephen first. You and Rex can stay and eat slowly. As Blair got up, Roger wanted to follow suit. However, Blair pressed upon his shoulders and made him sit on the ground. You only ate a little. I'm sure you're not full yet. Come back when you've eaten your fill. Roger was indeed still hungry, so he could only sit down as he was told. He glanced over at Stephen and saw a provocative look in his eyes. Despicable. So maddening. He knew he shouldn't have let this guy come along. Now, when finally things were great, not only did he miss out on the chance to interact one-on-one with Blair, but the snake was also going to have a chance to spend time with her alone. Looking at their interactions, intense envy could be seen in Rex's eyes. That look in his eyes was way too obvious. One glance at him and Roger read his emotions perfectly. No matter how you look, she won't be yours, Roger said. Rex got to his feet swiftly and forcefully, giving off a strong and oppressive vibe. Keep a good watch over your female. I'm afraid Andre didn't come with pure intentions. Roger said disdainfully. I don't need you to teach me. No one else stands a chance. Blair has said it before. She only wants me and that snake. She doesn't want anybody else. Rex didn't reply and simply turned to leave. Seeing no response from Rex, Roger lost interest. He continued eating his meat, his mind replaying Rex's words. Andre didn't come with pure intentions? What's Rex referring to? Is he courting Blair because he wants to rope in a four-striped beastman, seeing that Blair has a four-striped beastman as a mate? Very quickly, Roger dispelled this thought. The block-headed wolf tribe couldn't possibly have thought so much. Moreover, the male would have to sacrifice his lifetime's happiness to become mates with someone. For Andre to pursue Blair, he must really like her. The roads were too dark, and Blair couldn't see the path ahead of her. In order not to trip on the pebbles on the roads, she took the initiative to climb onto Stephen's back. Were you very bored today? I didn't hear you talk much. Blair asked softly as she leaned against Stephen's back. Sensing the weight on his back, Stephen felt satisfied. A smile could be sensed in his voice as he said, If I say yes, will you not attend this banquet in the future? Blair pouted and hesitated for a moment. I'd still like to go. After all, it only happens once a year. If you go, I will go, Stephen declared firmly, especially such gatherings where he had to be guarded against those descendants of the kings. Before the two of them reached their house, they heard the cuckoo noises of the short-winged bird. Several little animals of different species peered from outside, yearning to enter, but didn't quite dare to. Upon seeing them return, the little cubs fled and vanished in an instant. Blair sputtered with laughter. She swung her legs gently to indicate for Stephen to set her down. Surely those little ones weren't thinking of eating that bird. 
Blair said as she walked into the house. The little bird hasn't been fed. It must be hungry. As Stephen entered, the cuckoo noises stopped abruptly. Suddenly, it was all silence. Unaware of what was going on, Blair asked, Where's the short-winged bird? It's so frightened of you that it's gone silent. Cuckoo! The short-winged bird shrieked twice as Stephen grabbed it by its legs and brought it to her. Blair widened her eyes. Only after a long while could she see the silhouette of the short-winged bird. What does it eat? Anything. Short-winged birds are omnivorous birds, Stephen said. Blair's first instinct was to feed it rice, but she very quickly recalled that rice was very precious here, so she thought of the fish in the fish baskets. Let's see if it eats fish. Okay. Stephen went into the water to retrieve the fish baskets while Blair washed the pork belly by the river before smearing some salt on it. She had used a very little amount of salt, thinking that the temperature at night was lower, so it probably wouldn't go bad that easily. Stephen took out the fish, but the bird refused to eat. The two of them guessed that Stephen's presence was scaring it, so they left the fish before the bird outside. When Roger returned, Blair had just finished showering. She felt a little fearful, staying alone in the darkness, alone with Stephen. Seeing that Roger had returned, she instantly greeted him. Roger, you're back! At the sight of his female, Roger was suddenly overwhelmed with an urge. He ripped off his skirt and, with a roar, pounced towards her, nimbly transforming into a leopard as he flew through the air. Seeing a black figure fly towards herself, Blair raised her hands to shield her head by reflex. She silently scolded Roger. This darned leopard, is he trying to crush me to death? Roger didn't manage to pounce on Blair, but instead was sent flying towards the wall by the snake's tail. Having fallen in the heap of grass, Roger rolled around to ease the pain. Blair hurriedly rubbed the leopard's tummy. She looked up and said to Stephen, Stop picking on him all the time. Upon hearing the female reproach that snake beast man, Roger suddenly felt that his body didn't ache anymore. In fact, he even felt thankful to the snake for beating him. As Blair was rubbing his tummy, the soft and furry tummy under her palm suddenly became hard rock abs. She instantly retracted her hand. Roger flipped over, pinning Blair under his body and said, Don't fall for that wolf. I tell you, dogs can't change their habit of eating feces. That's even more so for wolves. Moreover, they like to eat that of their beloved female. If you accept him, be careful. He'll come to our sand pit to steal your feces. Blair was speechless. Stephen was speechless as well. But Roger, you're really good at smearing others. Don't mention finding a wolf mage. She couldn't even look a wolf beast man straight in the face now. Did you hear that? Roger shifted Blair's face to face him, asking seriously. Are you serious? Blair didn't want to believe this. I'm serious. If you don't believe me, ask Stephen. Roger looked toward Stephen and winked his eyes so hard it was as though he was having spasms. From the darkness came Stephen's calm voice. Uh, yes. Such a handsome guy and he actually likes to eat feces? No way. It was making her change her outlook on life. Roger cast a gleeful glance at Stephen. This was the first time Stephen felt that this leopard was somewhat useful. Now that Roger had returned, Blair brought up the topic of Rex. Er, uh, Rex made me eat a green crystal today. What? Roger sat upright in shock. Rex actually caught a giant beast? He's that powerful? Although herbivorous giant beasts only ate plants, their combative powers were much stronger than carnivorous giant beasts. They were several times larger than carnivorous beasts, and their skin was also tougher and more resilient. Only four-striped beast men were able to fight them, and even then their chances of defeating such beasts were remote, so it also depended on their luck. Stephen said, in the future, when I obtain a green crystal, I'll return it to him. Blair nodded. 
I didn't want it either. It's much too precious. But what effects does a green crystal have, exactly? I merely felt very comfortable all over after eating it. Roger fought to answer. Ordinary green crystals can increase a beast man's lifespan by 10 years. Look at how young my mother looks. That's because my father would gift one to her every 10 years. What? Blair gasped. So if one keeps eating it, won't they live forever? No idea, Roger said. No one can keep succeeding. The longest living four-stripe beast man in the city of beast men only lived to a hundred years. My father has already lived for 70 years. Perhaps any time now. Ah, so one has to risk his life to obtain it. Blair was curious about giant beasts. How did the energy crystals in their bodies come about? Is it because they're too large? That's why the energy in their bodies is condensed into a crystal? Stephen, Blair crawled to the pile of grass next to Stephen and asked, You're so formidable. Have you ever killed a herbivorous giant beast? Have you ever eaten a green crystal? Oh, wait, how old are you? I've never asked you that. Gazing at the female who came up to him, Stephen wanted very much to hold her close to him. But next to him was bare ground. That wouldn't do. He had to get himself a comfortable nest like that leopard. I've killed a few to keep myself in top form, Stephen said calmly. Seeing the look of admiration on her face, he suddenly felt pleased with himself. I'm probably 50 plus. Haven't been keeping track. Ah, Blair's face fell. Stephen turned out to be so old, even older than her father. Roger also looked at Stephen in surprise. They say that snakes are promiscuous by nature. This snake beast man only found himself a female at such an age. Based on his capability, it shouldn't be hard for him to snatch a female from a village when he was younger. But at the thought of how Stephen had four animal stripes, Roger felt relieved. If Stephen became a four-striped beast man in his teens or twenties, that would be unbelievable. Cuckoo! The short-winged bird cuckooed outside the door. It was probably pecking at the food it was given. Blair sighed with relief. She gently laid on the pile of grass and closed her eyes, then said with a smile, Great, we should be able to rear the short-winged bird. Without any nighttime activities, Blair slept very early. The next day, she was awoken by something touching her lower body. Mm. Blair rubbed her eyes, feeling a cooling sensation beneath her. When she closed her legs together, she felt a cold arm wedged between her legs, making her scream out loud. You're awake. Stephen was kneeling down by Blair's side, one hand still tightly wedged between her legs. His eyes were red and clear as he gazed at her. She was unable to draw the connection between those eyes and his obscene act. Blair quickly released Stephen's hand and shifted backward. Roger, who was awoken by Blair's screams, jumped up instantly. The leopard glanced warily at his surroundings and went around in circles. Is there an intruder? Blair could feel her underwear hanging on her thighs. Without even looking, she quickly pulled it up. She widened her eyes and glared at Stephen. What are you doing? Episode 51 Whom Did Blair Like More? I was checking if you're done with going into heat. Stephen's gaze swept over the cotton on the pile of grass. Some bloodstains could be seen. Seeing that you're not done, I wanted to help you change into a new piece of cotton. Blair held her hand over her chest and let out an exhale. Huh, I see. It was truly something that a beast man would do. Well, 
So long as he was not sneaking up to launch a sexual attack on her, as she had imagined, it was all right. Sprawled on the grass, Roger had transformed into a human and had his butt sticking up in the air, his thick and long tail hanging between his legs. The air is getting moister and moister. It's stifling. Stephen handed clean cotton to Blair. Conscious that she was in the presence of the opposite sex, she didn't even remove her underwear and simply placed the cotton into it by feel. Since even Roger felt awful, it was even more so for Blair. But what worried her more was the fact that her period had been going on for a long time now, eight or nine days. When was it going to end? She felt that it was perhaps because she had caught a cold previously. She felt regretful. Really shouldn't have done that. The fog was even more intense this morning. Winged insects were flying low across the skies in flocks. The most eye-catching were the dragonflies, followed by flies. One would easily bump into those winged insects as they walked. The birds were also flying at a low altitude. The vines binding the short-winged bird were long enough. It flapped its wings as it caught bugs to eat. It looked like it was used to being tyrannized over by Beastmen now and didn't seem that afraid of Stephen and Roger anymore. Blair washed up by the river. Seeing that Stephen was about to enter the river to collect the fish baskets, she quickly stopped him. I wish she had steamed eggs now. We also have some pork from yesterday. No need to take in the fish. Let's leave it for the next meal. Okay. Stephen agreed. He squatted down and started washing the rice. Roger's voice rang from inside the house. Hmm, the meat didn't go bad. (laughs) It's salty. I said it wouldn't go bad, right? Blair walked back barefooted, feeling a coldness underneath her feet. She wondered if the females here wore shoes during the winter. Never mind that. Even if they didn't, she would wear them, even if it made her look funny. Roger had started a fire in the house using the green firewood chopped yesterday. As the water content was heavy, the smoke was rather thick. White bubbles could be seen forming on top of the firewood. Stephen placed the bamboo on the same old spot to barbecue, while Blair asked Roger to cut the pork into thin slices before placing them into the stone pot. Are we cooking pork soup? Roger asked. Blair shook her head. We're not adding water, just stir-frying it a little. It had been a long while since she ate stir-fried food. Blair was really craving it. Too bad there weren't green chilies, black pepper, and other ingredients. She wasn't sure if simply frying the pork alone would taste good. This was a new dish, so Blair could only do it herself. After the pot was heated up, Roger brought her the oil contained in bamboo. It's so convenient now, Roger said with a sigh. Yeah. Blair smiled and took it from him. She added a few drops of oil into the stone pot before pouring the pork belly slices into it. Splattering sounds came from the pot, and very quickly the fragrance of the stir-fried meat wafted through the air. Because she was frying pork belly with the two layers of fat, there was now more oil in the pot. Roger gazed at the pot in astonishment and asked with a confused look. I was just thinking that there was very little oil in the pot earlier. Why is there suddenly so much oil in the pot? Blair said, this meat is fatty, that's why. I know that. I just hadn't expected it to contain so much oil. Blair stir-fried a little, then sprinkled ginger, garlic, various peppers, and other condiments into the pot. Instantly, the fragrance became richer. Even though Roger had never tried it before, merely sniffing it made his mouth water. Without other ingredients, the one kilogram of meat only came up to about one plateful after stir-frying it. It looked golden brown on the outside and smelled very aromatic. It really whetted one's appetite. Seeing Roger staring eagerly at the plate, Blair smiled and picked up a slice with her chopsticks. Try it. Roger leaped forward and took a bite in an exaggerated manner. After chewing it, he widened his eyes and exclaimed, Oh my God, I would thought the barbecued meat and fish steamboat you made were the tastiest foods. I hadn't imagined there's something even more delicious. 
Roger couldn't believe what he was tasting. After tasting it, he felt that the fragrance was even more alluring now. Stephen was staring intently at the firewood under the bamboo rice without saying a word. However, Blair knew that he was angry. She quickly picked up another slice of meat and, after blowing upon it, walked to Stephen and squatted down. You should try this too. I didn't add chili for you. With a flushed face from sitting in front of the fire, Blair said to Stephen with a smile. Stephen's expression immediately lightened up. Without even thinking, he opened his mouth and ate it. The food scalded his tongue. It was dry and sharp, and the taste of the condiments was too overwhelming for him. This really wasn't considered a delicacy to him. However, when he saw Blair's look of anticipation, Stephen smiled and carefully chewed it before saying, Very tasty. Blair heaved a sigh of relief. She ran to the pot and ate a slice herself. Not bad. But in order to force out the oil, the meat was a little charred. However, compared to other types of meat, this stir-fried meat still tasted so much better. No wonder the females here like to eat pork. Now, Blair's favorite type of meat was pork as well. Seeing that the rice was about to be cooked, Blair quickly went to work on the steamed egg. This wasn't difficult. She frequently made eggs when cooking rice in the rice cooker at home. Her mother told her that steamed egg made using rice water tasted the best, but since resources were limited here, she could only use water. Blair scooped the stir-fried meat into the stone bowl, then, without washing the bowl, directly poured in some water and a dash of salt. Because stone decreased in temperature at a slower rate, the instant the water was poured into it, the water became warm. Blair beat three eggs and mixed them with a pair of chopsticks. Gazing at the murky water, Roger asked, Are you making an egg steamboat? This is turning into water. Blair was filled with laughter. The only thing you know is a steamboat. This is called a steamed egg. I made enough for the three of us. The taste is light, so Stephen should be able to eat this. Upon hearing this, Stephen looked over with interest. Although his face was expressionless, there was a smile in his eyes. I like to eat eggs. But what he meant was cold and raw eggs. Really? Then you must eat more later, Blair said with a smile. Then she removed the firewood and placed the stone pot right over the charcoal fire, using a large tree leaf to cover the pot. It should cook this way. After approximately ten minutes, the bamboo rice was cooked. Blair lifted the tree leaf that had turned soft from the heat and saw a light yellow substance. Because there was a sauce of meat in it, the fragrance of the steamed egg was very intense. Roger opened his mouth wide. His female cooked foods like she was conjuring magic. It was clearly a pot of water earlier, but now it had solidified. Blair smiled and used chopsticks to poke at the steamed egg. She wasn't too satisfied with it, actually. The fire was too big, so there were some bubbles in the steamed egg. Next time, she ought to turn down the fire. As the pot was too wide, the three eggs only occupied a thin layer. Blair scooped a bowl for Stephen first and set it aside to let it cool, then asked Roger to go over and eat. Roger eagerly brought a stone bowl with him. He wasn't too hungrily initially, but the fragrance of the food made him hungry. Although the steamed eggs didn't look very appetizing, it actually tasted much better than what she used to taste at home. The taste of eggs laid by farm chickens simply couldn't compare to this. The stir-fried pork went well with rice, so Blair ate a lot for this meal. Stephen was particularly interested in the solidified egg. He raised the bowl and slurped a mouthful. How is it? Blair asked immediately upon noticing Stephen eat the egg. Stephen froze and looked down at the steamed egg. His Adam's apple moved slowly as he swallowed the warm food into his stomach. In the past, he didn't comprehend what beast men meant by tasty at all. But now, he finally understood. This bowl of steamed egg, for example, was warm, smooth, and deliciously savory. 
Stephen couldn't take hot or cold food, but he especially loved warm food. The warm and light-tasting food felt just right in the snake beast man's mouth. A smile spread across Blair's face as she watched Stephen's reaction. She pointed at the rice cooker and asked, Do you like it? There's more in the rice cooker. Roger's heart thumped at Blair's words. He stopped himself from having one more bite of the steamed egg so that she could have more of it, and now she was giving it all to the snake beast man? You eat it, Blair, Roger immediately interjected. Blair licked her lips and replied, I'm full. Then I'll eat it, Roger said as he reached out to grab the rice cooker. However, Stephen was stronger and faster than him. With a flick of his snake tail, he quickly brought the rice cooker towards him. Flustered and exasperated, Roger stood up, wanting to snatch the rice cooker back. Blair smiled as she held Roger back. Stephen rarely comes across food that he likes to eat. Don't fight with him for it. You can eat meat instead. Roger looked at Blair for a moment before grumpily walking out of the room. No thanks. It's not every day that we get the chance to eat pork. I'll save it for Blair to eat in the afternoon. Roger crouched by the river and drank water. He felt even more upset as he looked at his downcast reflection. It was great in the past when it was just him and Blair. There wasn't a need to fight over food. Even a cold-blooded beast man was better than him. Suddenly feeling like he had nothing to live for, Roger lay by the river as if he was on the verge of death. Since Stephen was the last to finish eating, he also did the cleaning. When the sun rose, the fog cleared, but there were still many insects at low altitudes. The males were very busy as there was still a lot of work to be done in preparation for the rainy season. Stephen and Roger moved the firewood out of the house and let them dry in the sun. Roger then returned to the stone castle and brought the animal hide he had tanned back to the house, while Stephen headed out of the city to cut grass. Feeling stuffed, Blair sat underneath the tree in front of the house to allow the food to digest. She also kept watch over the firewood so that the children in the village wouldn't snatch them away to play. From afar, Blair saw a beast man walking towards her while carrying something leafy. When he got closer, she realized that he was a wolf beast man and instantly had a strange look on her face. The wolf beastman stood still in front of Blair, then passed the fruits in his hand to her and said, This is for you. Blair recalled what Roger said. The fox may grow gray, but never good, and couldn't help but move backward. Since it was daytime and it was bright outside, Blair could tell that he had a shy look on his serious and handsome face. This scene looked like an innocent teenager confessing his love to a girl, and it was Blair's first time experiencing such a thing after she transmigrated. Roger always harassed her rudely and unreasonably, and Stephen was even more overbearing. He just abducted her. As for the bear, his body was too large, so he didn't count. But no matter how this scene matched up to Blair's expectations about love, when she thought about what Roger said, the pink bubbles in her head all popped. Not only that, but she was also somewhat like a married woman now. No, I can't take this, Blair said firmly. When she looked up at Andre, she accidentally spotted his crotch and his animal skin skirt. It was black and furry. Blair quickly stood up. Andre stepped closer towards her and shoved the fruits into her hands. As Blair pushed the fruits back to reject him, she discreetly sniffed them and didn't notice any unpleasant smell. The fruits then landed in her hands as Andre let go, not giving her time to react. Episode 52, Rex in a Coma Seeing that Blair wasn't very welcoming to him, after shoving the fruits into her hands, Andre said, Then I'll head back. Hey! Blair tried to chase after him. 
The ground beneath her bare feet was burning hot from being exposed to the sun, so much so that it caused her to jump and accidentally scatter the fruits all over the ground. When she finished picking them up, Andre was already far away. It's burning hot. Blair quickly ran back to the tree and frowned as she massaged her feet. The soles of her feet had been scalded. In this world, all the fruits were picked in the wild, and there was an abundance of them. It wouldn't look good if she told him to come back just so she could return such insignificant things. Blair wasn't unreasonable either. She picked up a strawberry from the pile of fruits and ate it. Roger returned with a pile of animal skin. When he saw Blair eating under the tree, he looked around before asking, Did the snake beast man pick those for you? No. Blair looked up and saw the animal skin that Roger brought back, then stood up with piqued interest. Andre gave them to me. Did you bring back all this animal skin? Let me see. <laughs> that guy. Roger let out a disgruntled scoff. He quickened his steps upon seeing that Blair was about to rush back into the house. Don't move. I'll come get you after I put them down. After Roger carried her back into the house, she put down the fruits and flipped through the animal skins. They were in whole pieces, and she could recognize the various animals. There were bear and tiger skins, and their heads and claws were still intact. Roger rubbed the top of Blair's soft hair and said, These are all old ones. You can make do with these first. I'll tan new animal skins for you when the cold season approaches. Is it troublesome? Why must you wait until the cold season? Blair raised her head and glanced at him. Roger replied, That's when animals' fur is the thickest and they don't shed easily. Blair suddenly recalled that Stephen caught a huge rabbit for her to eat when she was first taken away by him. That beast's fur was extremely soft. She wanted it. Then what about a rabbit? About this big? Blair gestured with her hands. She wasn't even sure if that was a rabbit, as she had never seen such a huge one before. Roger flicked his fingers on Blair's forehead and replied, Sure, I'll keep an eye out when the time comes. Roger looked outside the house and said, This year's rainy season is approaching especially quickly. I have to hurry up and get to work. I'll deal with the sand pits first. Blair followed him to the sand pits. The house coincidentally cast a shadow on the ground here, causing it to feel cool. The sand pits were located beside the main room. They had shelters to keep out the rain and prevent the sand from getting wet. Roger walked to the sand pit and dug with his hands. Blair shouted, That's so gross! Roger grinned and said as he continued digging, No, it's not. Everything's already dry. Roger then dug out a hard object that was covered with sand and placed it on the large leaf next to him. Blair averted her eyes. After a while, she couldn't help but take a glance and realize that the shapes and colors of their stool were all different. A fire burned brightly in the pit. After it naturally extinguished, Roger scooped out the remains bit by bit. He then wrapped them in a piece of animal skin that he was going to throw away and smashed them with a rock. When he unwrapped the animal skin, the animal bones had already been turned into ash. Roger was about to bring the ashes to the mountains to dispose of them when Blair shouted from inside the house, Wash your hands, you dirty leopard. Okay. Roger obediently washed his hands, then showed her his dripping wet hands. They're washed clean now. Since I'm heading out, I'm going to take the chance to hunt as well. However, when Roger returned with his prey, Stephen had already prepared food for Blair. They were roasting a whole sheep in the main room, and there was another sheep on the verge of death wrapped around Stephen's tail. When Blair saw Roger, she immediately called out to him, Roger, quickly come and eat. The meat's just been roasted. Roger threw his prey on the ground, and it landed with a thump. He stood stiffly beside the fire. No thanks. I'll eat my own meat. I'll roast it once you two are done. 
Blair glanced at Roger's prey and internally sighed at the idea that the food was about to go to waste. But there's so much here. I won't be able to finish it, and Stephen doesn't like to eat cooked food. You two can take turns to hunt in the future. It'll also be a little easier for you that way. <clears throat> at first, Roger didn't want to accept her suggestion. However, he then remembered that other people did the same thing and he would seem unreasonable if he continued to be against it. He could only sit down in a displeased manner. Seeing that Roger had returned, Stephen carried his prey and slithered further away from him before fully transforming into a beast and swallowing his prey bit by bit. He then slowly slithered into the bedroom, closed his retinas, and dozed off. Despite having seen Stephen feed a few times, Blair couldn't help but feel uneasy. However, this time she felt a little safer with Roger around. She only relaxed when Stephen went into the house. What are you going to do with your prey? Blair asked. Roger glanced at his lifeless prey before replying, I'll just throw it into the river to feed the fish. Honestly, what's with that damned snake? His prey was still alive. Blair couldn't think of any way to preserve the meat, and curing it with salt would be too wasteful. She could only agree with Roger's idea. The rainy season arrived without a warning. That afternoon, the sky suddenly turned dark the moment the temperature dropped. The wind then blew fiercely, causing the air to be full of sand particles. The insects in the air suddenly vanished, and the air pressure was so low that it was difficult to breathe. Roger and Stephen moved the firewood and grass they had left to dry in the sun into the house. As soon as they were done, there was a loud crack of thunder and rain poured from the sky. Surprise could be seen in Blair's eyes as she crawled up to the window and looked outside. What a downpour! She had never seen such a heavy rain before. It wasn't much of a stretch to say that it was raining cats and dogs. Stephen built his nest next to Roger's, which was the smaller one. He then said to Blair, Come and sleep here. Roger immediately said, Blair's sleeping with me. Feeling the atmosphere between the two grow dangerously explosive, Blair stood firmly by the window and pretended to look at the scenery. I'm not going to sleep. I want to look at the rain. The lightning and thunder outside caused light to flash across Blair's face. A sudden peal of thunder could be heard from not far away. Then a tiger was illuminated by strong light. Its wet fur stuck to its skin, causing its bones to stick out. Its face was covered in scars, causing it to look ferocious and terrifying. Blair yelped and stepped backward. The strong light flashed again. Its strong silhouette seemed to be broken up by the rain. Blair. Roger and Stephen rushed up to her at the same time, but Stephen eventually reached her first and hugged her. Don't worry, I'm here. Stephen lifted Blair's chin and kissed her face. Blair muttered as she pointed out the window. I think there's a beastman outside who got struck by lightning. Roger looked outside the window and replied, There really is a beast lying on the floor. He then climbed out of the window. Blair quickly said, be careful. Roger transformed into a leopard and vigorously jumped into the rain. He walked through the door while holding a tiger between his jaws. He then left it in the main room and didn't enter the bedroom. Roger shook the water off his body before transforming into a human. I'll let him take shelter from the rain since he gave you a green crystal. Blair jumped out of Stephen's arms and felt her way around as she walked to the main room. Is that Rex? Did he get struck by lightning? Roger sniffed and replied, I don't think so. He doesn't smell like lightning. How did he pass out then? Blair's hand landed on the flint beside the pile of firewood and struck it, creating a series of sparks. Roger snatched the flint from her and a small fire rose in the house. At that moment, Stephen moved his snake tail and entered the main room. He looked at Rex carefully for a moment before saying, He's been poisoned. Blair froze. 
Remembering that Stephen was a venomous snake, she immediately asked, Can you neutralize the poison? Stephen replied, I can only neutralize my own poison. I remember that he rescued a female from the hands of a scorpion homeless beast. So he was probably stung by him. Since he could survive until now, it means that the poison isn't fatal to him. But he passed out. Blair was confused. Everyone was in their homes during this period. If Rex was poisoned, why did he come out? He probably wasn't harmed by someone, right? Blair couldn't tell but feel suspicious. Who would harm a beast man with four animal stripes? He's a source of pride in the city of beast men, Roger immediately retorted. Just as he finished speaking, he heard chaotic footsteps amidst the sound of falling rain. There's a lot of beast men outside. Blair was taken aback. She then ordered firmly, quickly hide him. Roger hid Rex in the pile of firewood. Outside the house, a group of wolves lowered their heads as they carefully analyzed the scent. The scent had led them here. A group of wolves huddled together and sniffed, then looked at the stone house opposite. Bang, bang, bang. Andre transformed into a human and knocked on the wooden door. The door was forcefully flung open from the inside, causing Andre to quickly dodge so that he wouldn't be sent flying. What? Roger asked curtly as he stared at Andre with aggression in his eyes. This guy had the nerve to fight with him for his female. He would kill him for that one day. Andre's eyes scanned the interior of the house. A fire had been lit. His expression softened when he saw Blair seemingly try to warm herself up. Blair... Stephen instantly exuded a dangerous aura, narrowing his eyes as he looked towards the door. Blair was the only one worried about Rex. She asked Andre nervously, It's late. What are you doing here? Andre replied, Just passing by. Have you all seen Rex? Blair secretly felt wary as she shook her head. It was possible that Andre didn't harbor any ill intentions, but Rex's actions were too strange. It would be too risky to suddenly hand him over to beast men of a different species. If it were tiger beast men, she would feel slightly more relieved. What happened? It's raining so heavily now. I don't think anyone would come out, Blair asked tentatively. Andre replied, he's gone mad. He suddenly rushed out when the Ape King was giving him treatment and attacked a lot of people. It's fine as long as you're all right. I'll continue looking for him. A wolf beast man howled unhappily. Andre glared at the wolf coldly and said, The rain washed away his scent. We'll move forward and continue our search.